we just can't deal with our emotions. We're either in denial, oh, we don't like what they just said to us. Either we suppress our feelings, so we kind of pretend we didn't hear it and push it away because we don't want to be bothered with that feeling. Or we express our feelings, so we tell them what for and say, excuse me, what did you just say? Or we escape, we would do anything not to be alone with our feelings because we just don't know what to do with them. We're frantically busy all the time. We have the TV on or we have music on all the time. The feeling is still there. It's hidden under the carpet. This doesn't work, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work. You may go and express your feelings because you know that suppressing is wrong, so you need to just let those feelings out. You may feel a light relief when you express your feelings, but it's still there. We get lost in music, we get lost in a film, you know, we go out and drink, or we become a workaholic, or we do all these things to escape from our feelings. My nickname at school was Agrocelia. The first school that I went to, they actually contacted my parents to say, look, either she gets psychiatric help or she needs to leave. I used to express my anger a lot. Even through university, I expressed my anger. I used to trash my room. I used to, I just had so much anger. I used to scream into my pillow. I used to throw things out the window. <laughs> and the more I expressed that anger and let that anger out, it kind of fueled it. I didn't feel any better. It didn't go away. I wasn't like, oh gosh, I'm glad that I threw that out the window or had that bottle of gin or whatever it is. I feel loads better now. I just didn't want to be at home. So during my 20s, I was out all the time. I was just out partying all the time. I was the last person to come back from a club. And then I would just go to after parties and after parties. Not because I thought it was cool. I just didn't want to go home because being at home would be facing reality. I would have to face my feelings. If suppressing our feelings doesn't help, if expressing our feelings doesn't help and escaping from our feelings doesn't help then what do we do we don't want to be bothered by feelings so we will deny them or we'll project them on other people or he made me upset or he did this blah 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 well she got me upset she was the one who said that blah 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 but if we're not properly processing our feelings they will build up and we will at some point go off like a pressure cooker and possibly at the wrong time A situation or a person will just trigger the feelings that we already have inside of us. A prideful person will constantly be insulted. If we have suppressed anger, we'll find ourselves surrounded by circumstances that we find infuriating. We can see this in ourselves and in other people, how we deal with certain situations. I mean, we had a power cut yesterday for the whole day. And it's interesting because the reaction from different neighbours was completely different. One of the neighbours was very much, oh, for goodness sake, it's just useless, and I was just like, but I know I would have been like that years ago when I was younger. Anything to just trigger that anger. Depending on these emotions that already lie dormant within you, that is how you're going to respond to these. Obviously, there are a lot more emotions than these that I've just mentioned. So how you deal with all of these situations is based on what's already in you. If you already have anxiety within you, then the pandemic will trigger your anxiety. And it's interesting. Let me just touch on anxiety for a minute. The interesting thing with anxiety is the body cannot tell the difference between an actual event and what the mind is producing. Whether the actual event is happening or whether you're at home sitting in a chair, your body will respond the same way. In both situations, our body is in fight or flight mode. You see, anxiety will produce these scenarios in your mind, which may or may not happen and probably won't happen, but you'll be shortness of breath and 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 you just can't breathe and and you're sitting at home in a chair well not in a chair on a chair your body is producing everything as if the event is actually happening and you're actually at home safe and nothing's happening this situation is actually worse than this situation because at least in an actual event you can do something about it you can't remedy an imaginary situation but in a real event you would just crack on and just deal with it you would just get to it and deal with whatever it is that you need to deal with so how do we deal with this now i'm going to take you through the steps that worked for me number one you need to become aware that it's an illusion 
William Shakespeare said, there's nothing either good or bad, it's thinking that makes it so. Learn to become aware of the difference between the actual situation and what your mind is telling you about that situation. Second thing you need to do is move your focus from your thoughts to within. And to do that, what I used to do would be, I would close my eyes, I would, well, go somewhere quiet first so you're not gonna be disturbed. Focus on your breathing, close your eyes, focus on your breathing. As soon as you realize your mind wandering, bring the attention back into your breathing. When you become a bit calmer, then just focus on your hands. With your eyes closed, just focus the awareness on your hands and you'll feel the energy around your hands. And then you can focus on your feet or your legs, whatever, and move around your body, just taking the attention to your body. I can't remember the last time I dealt with anxiety. This really works. This really does work. The interesting thing is, when you do bring the attention within, when you have to respond to a situation and there is something you have to do, and you'll, maybe that's why this anxiety has come up, because you know, you've know got to do this, this is happening this afternoon, or this is happening tomorrow. And, uh, when you are calm and present, then solutions start to unfold. It's a bit like a pond. If there's a pond and you're messing the water up, then all the dirt from the bottom of the pond will become mixed in with the water. And you have to wait until that settles. And all the dirt goes down to the bottom of the water. And then you can actually drink the water again, because it's clear. Similar with our minds. So when the thoughts do come back, become an observer of the thought. Don't engage with the thought. Don't add thoughts onto the thought. Just when the thoughts come, just allow them to go. Don't resist the thought or fight against it. Just allow the thoughts to come through and go. Just observe them as if you're looking out to see what the weather's like. Thoughts come into your mind, you're like, oh my word, how did that thought come from? Thoughts come and go. I used to listen to Headspace, which is a meditation app, and Headspace teaches you to note the thought. So when a thought does come to your mind, you literally just note it, rather than like, oh my gosh, and then this, and then that, and then you add on to it, and you have a conversation with your thoughts, and then you're talking, and blah, and then it becomes this big thing, you're back up here, again and you're back in the anxiety again so what you do when the thoughts come you don't entertain them you just note them a horrible thought will come to your mind like what if i get on the bus today i might catch the virus somebody spoke to me really closely yesterday and they might have had the virus and i'm feeling a bit like you know your body will respond <laughs> to your thoughts and your feelings just be very very careful about the thoughts that you entertain because you'll start feeling the feelings and then your body will kick into action so when a thought like that does come to your mind just note the thought oh, that's a negative thought and just watch it go by i would highly recommend meditation if you don't already meditate and you suffer from negative feelings, negative thoughts, anxiety, sadness, anger, stress, anything like that, I would highly suggest you learn meditation. This will calm your mind and this works for anybody. So similar to how we deal with negative thoughts, we become the observer of our feelings. When a feeling does seem to come up, especially with past feelings, I do a lot of this in my meditation time to get rid of some of those old feelings that have just been buried there for 30 plus years. I'm not gonna tell you my age. To actually allow the feeling to dissipate, we need to focus on the feeling. So when the feeling arises, you just focus on that feeling. You don't add any thought to the feeling. You don't judge the feeling. You don't engage with the feeling. You just feel the feeling. It's interesting because it does doesn't fuel the feeling. It actually has the opposite effect. When you just allow the feeling to just be, the feeling actually dissipates. Don't try and work out why you're feeling the feeling, just allow the feeling to be there. There may be another feeling underlying that feeling that will then come up as well. It's about surrendering to the feelings and letting go. You may find yourself healed of certain sicknesses and things because of allowing these feelings to, to flow through you. If you've learned anything in this video, then please hit the like button and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.